Okay, let's continue our discussion on renormalization group equations. So let me remind you what we have done so far. Okay, here. So you see the first equation here. This one. This was based on. So where is that? Yeah, this one was purely based on dimensional analysis. Okay, so we had scaled all the momenta by a factor of s. S is a dimensionless number. It could be two. 10 or 1000 or whatever. Okay, so you are scaling all the momenta and then the green renormalized Green's function, okay, it satisfies this equation. And also we had already seen the renormalization group equations, which is given by this equation. This is what the renormalized Green's function satisfies. Okay, where the gamma phi is the anomalous dimension of uh, of phi. Okay, and then we had eliminated mu from these two equations, the derivative of mu, and then we had found this equation, okay, which is S D over D S. You can write delta over delta S, a partial derivative. Okay, in fact, it will be better to write it as a partial derivative. Because there are many, many arguments, so I'm here I mean that I'm only differentiating with respect to S, keeping others fixed. So you have, um, yeah, so S del over del S, and then you have a derivative with respect to renormalized um, coupling. It co accompanies a beta tilde, okay? And then you have a derivative with respect to renormalized mass, okay, and you have MR, which is multiplied with one plus gamma m. Okay, so you see that if if you had no uh, renormalization, no need for renormalization, if there were no infinities, then the gamma m would be zero. Okay, if you go back and see, then uh, from the definition of gamma m, you will see that it will be one because it involves derivative of z and z to the lowest order is one, so that will be zero. So this term would be in the absence of renormalization would be just MR del over del MR. Okay, and that, that is what this one is. So if gamma M is zero, it is just one here. So MR del, M, del over del MR. But if you need renormalization, then gamma M is non-zero. And this MR changes by MR gamma M. Okay. And uh, here you have similarly minus N <clears throat> d phi tilde plus gamma phi and again if um, no renormalization was required then z phi would be 1 remember z phi is given by this so z phi would be 1 if you don't require renormalization then you can take phi to be phi r okay then gamma phi would be 0 again for the same reason that the it involves the derivatives of z and z is just one, so that gives you zero. And here you would have just minus n times the dimension of phi tilde. Okay. But in the presence of renormalization, when there are infinities, this n times d, d, uh, d phi tilde gets modified to n times d phi tilde plus gamma phi. So that's a contribution coming from. Uh, the fact that there are infinities and we need to renormalize. Okay, so that is the equation we had um, obtained last time. And remember, mu is fixed. We are not changing mu anymore. The derivatives with respect to mu are gone and we can work with a fixed value of, of mu. Okay, so we'll start from here. Let me just copy it.
Okay, this is what we had. Also, I can remove these other things. Okay. So that's what we had, and now I will um, define. gamma tilde m to be gamma uh, 1 plus gamma m okay and there's the definition and d phi tilde which is the dimension of phi tilde in four dimensions and we are sorry in um, 4 minus 2 epsilon dimensions um, So this d phi tilde plus gamma phi, okay, this is what we define as gamma tilde phi. Okay. So this is the anomalous dimension and you, gamma tilde phi is anomalous dimension plus the canonical dimension. Okay, the canonical, canonical dimension that you get by just counting um, the mass dimension of phi tilde. Okay, so these are the definitions. So our equation becomes with these uh, definitions, S del over del S minus beta tilde del over del lambda R gamma tilde M M R del over del M R minus N n gamma tilde phi okay so now i have all of them as tildes okay they have all of them have tilde g tilde n renormalized ski lambda r m r mu okay that's the equation that we have okay and what I want to do is I want to figure out how these Green's functions behave at large momenta meaning I want to take large values of s so how I can relate it to a Green's function at uh, how I can relate Green's functions at lower energies to Green's functions at higher energies right because this is a differential equation in s Okay, and the solution of this will give you give you a, uh, an expression relating Green's functions at different energy scales. Okay, so that is what we want to do. So this is a first order linear homogeneous partial differential equation for g tilde n and that is what I want to solve now. So first thing that I do is, this is not nice that the sign of this is different from the sign of this one okay so I will I will change the sign of this and make it plus and you will see why why that that is something I want so for that I do a change of variable from s to t where t is minus log s it is just a change of variable t will be T, just like S is a scale, T is a scale. The relation is this. So, what is del over del T? This is minus S del over del S that you can check. And of course, S is equal to e to the minus T. So, if I take the exponential on both sides, S is e to the minus T. Okay. So, I will substitute this. This and this in the previous equation which will give me del over del t 
plus so what I'm doing is del over s del over del s is minus del over del t okay so that and I'm then multiplying this entire equation by a minus sign so you can multiply this entire equation by a minus sign this will give you minus s del over del t sorry minus s del over del s but minus s del over del s is del over del t that is what I have written here and because I have multiplied by a minus sign overall this changes the sign so it's beta tilde delta over delta lambda r this changes sign and this also changes sign Okay. Uh, no. So S is e to the minus t now. Here I should. Um, instead of S, I should write e to the minus t. Okay. So this is fine. Now uh, let's search for the solution and for that I'm going to introduce uh, two new quantities okay, uh, which are called running coupling constant or effective coupling constant and running uh, mass or effective mass. Okay, So let us carry this equation to the next page so that we know what we are trying to solve. Okay, that's what we want to solve. To solve this, okay. uh, just to remind you again, what we want to, what we will find is the Green's functions at scaled up momenta related to Green's functions without scaled up momenta. Okay, that is what it will do. So now the scale is t. Okay, instead of s the scaling variable is t. Okay. So to solve this equation let's introduce um, okay so so I will introduce new quantities Okay, which are called running coupling constant. Okay, this is something new that I'm going to define. It's, it has not been already. So uh, the coupling constant that we have been talking about till now, lambda r at mu. Okay, this is a coupling constant with when you give a value of mu, you get a value of lambda r. Okay, so when, when you do an experiment, you choose a value of mu okay and through experiments you can find out given that choice which is arbitrary of course given that choice of mu what are the values of lambda r and mr that will reproduce your physical observations okay but the running coupling constant which i am introducing is something different it is not lambda r mu okay that's a new object that i am going to define and you should ask what is the definition of it okay so that's one thing I'm going to define and another thing will be running mass or running mass parameter. Okay, just like MR, uh, this is also not a physical mass, right? Because MR is not physical. What is physical is the, the physical mass is obtained by the pole of the propagator right? that we have seen and how to get physical mass in terms of uh, uh, renormalized mass and renormalized coupling constant. And similarly, this running mass parameter you should not think of as physical mass. Physical mass is always obtained by looking at the pole of the propagator. 
okay so that is not something you should uh, confuse with so okay so what's the how what's the definition of rolling coupling constant so or or also effect it's also called effective coupling constant and this is also called effective mass okay parameter so i'm not going to give you a, a direct uh, functional form of these running coupling constant and running mass parameter rather the way we define it is through a differential equation that this satisfies okay a first order differential equation that this satisfies uh, the the running coupling constant and the running mass parameter and specify the boundary condition okay once you have specified the boundary condition and given the differential equation the solution is unique okay and that you can solve to get uh, that function so we will define it through uh, the differential equation and the boundary condition so running coupling constant is denoted by lambda bar it's a function of t okay that is by definition or function of t and this thing is m bar a function of t okay i'm not going to put any subscript r here okay because there is no need these are anyway finite quantities okay so there is no need to put r or whatever there is no corresponding bare thing defined so there is no need to put r as a subscript so what's the definition of lambda bar the differential equation that lambda bar satisfies is the following i mean this is the definition i'm saying it has uh, by definition it satisfies the this differential equation okay it doesn't follow from something else it is it is definition that i gave so delta lambda bar over delta t is equal to beta tilde of lambda bar t that's the differential equation it satisfies and of course giving a differential equation only even though it's first order doesn't solve it completely unless you specify boundary condition okay so the boundary condition is that lambda bar at t equal to 0 is equal to lambda r okay and i'm going to suppress mu because mu we always keep fixed now okay we are not varying mu at all so lambda r at whatever chosen value of mu which is not going to change in this entire analysis okay so what is the boundary condition that lambda r at t equal to 0 meaning at zero scaling should be equal to the renormalized coupling constant okay and this is the differential equation that it satisfies so you see that when you solve it you will get lambda bar of t and it will the solution will contain lambda r okay whatever that lambda r you have chosen so i am making that dependence explicit here now okay so lambda bar of tr okay this is what is your lambda bar of t okay i have just used the fact that this uh this will enter the solution of lambda bar okay so i am just indicating that by making it a part of the argument so i will also just uh, rewrite this differential this defining uh, differential equation using this fact so delta lambda bar t lambda r over delta t is beta tilde lambda bar of t lambda r okay that is our defining equation i could have written this one first okay without doing this way but just wanted to convey how lambda r comes about so this is the defining equation of the running coupling constant
Okay, and similarly, um, I will define, um, give the definition of m m bar of t, okay, the effective mass or the running mass, and it is defined by the following differential equation: del m bar t lambda r, okay, over delta t minus 1 over m bar of you can put again t lambda r okay this is equal to gamma tilde m lambda bar t lambda r okay so gamma tilde uh, gamma tilde we already know it's a function of lambda r that lambda r you replace by lambda bar okay and whatever you get sits here okay and this is the differential equation and this is again by definition it satisfies this differential equation together with the boundary condition that m bar at t equal to 0 and with this choice of lambda r is m r okay so that's the these are the defining equations. Okay. Let me make it a little nicer. So here, these two together and these two together. Okay, so now we have define these two objects let's see how they can be useful in solving the the differential equation so in this equation here maybe now that i'm boxing i will box this also in this differential equation i will replace wherever i have lambda r by lambda bar and wherever I have MR, renormalized mass, I will replace it by M bar, meaning effective mass. Okay, and I can do so because this equation is val valid for all values of lambda R and MR. Okay, so my this replacement is allowed. So let's do that. Okay, so it's here again, and what I should do is replace lambda r by lambda bar of t lambda r and m r by m bar t lambda r. Okay, so I'll make this replacement of renormalized coupling and renormalized mass by effective uh, coupling and effective mass or running coupling and running mass. So what do I get? I get um, delta over delta t plus beta tilde and beta tilde is a function of lambda bar okay I will not write T lambda R again I'll leave it like this but that is understood and then we have delta over delta lambda 
bar okay because wherever you have lambda r you replace by lambda bar minus gamma tilde m and this written as function of lambda bar okay uh, we are working in the ms and ms bar schemes okay M or or in short ms scheme so gamma tilde was remember it is 1 plus gamma m and we have already argued that gamma m okay and uh, gamma phi uh, 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 these these do not depend on the renormalized mass mr or on the scale mu right in these schemes the zs are independent of uh, mu and mr okay the, and that is why these are called mass independent renormalization schemes okay so here um this gamma tilde m will be a will be a function of lambda so that lambda i'm replacing by lambda bar and this um m bar mr i should replace by m bar then del over del mr will get replaced by del m del over del mr uh, del over del m bar okay i want to make the arguments explicit let me just see this is fine good um so i am making all the arguments explicit now so m bar so here mr is a function of lambda r right the renormalized mass is a function of renormalized coupling constant okay so if i had written here mr of lambda r which is something i should have done made it more explicit then you see when you replace it mr by mr the argument will get changed to lambda bar okay and del over del m bar again this is this has the same argument uh, lambda bar plus n gamma tilde phi again this is a function of lambda bar okay this acting on g tilde n renormalized e to the minus t these moment are ki lambda bar mr replaced by m bar and mu mu i can drop it is fixed okay don't worry about mu there is no mu here okay so good we are here um so let's see how we can um we can write this so if you look at the total derivative of time not time sorry uh, total derivative of t d over dt okay this is what del over del t that's the partial derivative plus del over del lambda bar okay and then you have del lambda bar over del t okay plus del over del m bar del m bar over del t and what is this this is del over del t and we have defined del lambda bar over del t is beta tilde so this is beta tilde of lambda bar of t lambda r i'll just make it explicit okay now this term del over del m bar what is del m bar over del t what happened what is del m bar over del t it is minus 1 over m bar so you take that to the other side so del m bar over del t is minus m bar gamma tilde 
okay so it is minus m bar um, and gamma tilde okay and again i should write those arguments gamma tilde of um lambda bar which is function of t and lambda r and then you had del o del m bar okay so if you see here this is exactly the same thing right so del over del t here del over del lambda beta tilde that is del over del lambda beta tilde then you have del over del m multiplying gamma tilde multiplying m bar you have del over del m bar m bar gamma tilde m. so that's the same thing with the same minus sign so these first three terms together become the total derivative of t so d over dt then you have plus n gamma tilde phi of lambda bar okay and maybe i should write it nicely plus n gamma tilde phi of this is the argument of it lambda bar and this is t lambda r okay this is the operator that acts on the renormalized green's function the end point renormalized green's function and the arguments are e to the minus t k i lambda bar t lambda r and m bar t lambda r okay mu is equal to 0 so remember we have chosen mu to be fixed and that given that fixed mu lambda r is a fixed object okay and then right now you have these m bars and lambda bars they vary with the value of t okay so the the variable here is t now okay so you as you change the t the values of m bar and lambda bar change keeping mu fixed correspondingly keeping uh, correspondingly keeping lambda r and m r fixed okay so good we have uh, converted this partial differential equation to a uh, uh, ordinary differential equation now let's integrate this out this is what we have now so let's integrate this so when you integrate this you will get the following and um okay let me give you the solution and then we can check g tilde n r e to the minus g tilde n r e to the minus t okay remember uh, this is just scaling okay so you are scaling all the momenta all the components by a factor of e to the minus t okay lambda bar of t i am suppressing 
or maybe I should not suppress. I'll just keep it. Then m bar of t lambda r, the redundant mu is equal to g n r. So this is the solution, okay. We'll check why this is the solution. So you get k i, so instead of e to the minus t, it's k i. Um, lambda r, not lambda bar, lambda r, m r, mu, okay. As you can see, this is, this. there is no t dependency, dependence here. So this is really coming from the uh, integration constants times, uh, maybe here, let me try if it works, e to the minus integral zero to t dt prime n gamma tilde phi and the arguments are lambda bar t prime lambda r. Okay, that's the first bracket closing and then this is the second bracket closing. So that's the solution. Okay, where um, lambda bar zero lambda r, this is what we have used. Okay, that's uh, what we have used. Now I will, okay, let me first show you that if I take this uh, and differentiate, uh, this satisfies the above equation. So let's take a derivative of the right hand side. Okay, so check, let's check. So take a derivative, take the derivative of right hand side. Okay, this, this, this does not depend on t. Okay, so that just comes out. So d over dt of the right hand side, which is g n r into this exponential. Okay, this is g n r times you have to take the derivative of this object with respect to t. So um, let me just tell you on the other page. So um, what we want to calculate is something of this sort. Um, d over dt of something uh, fr uh, of an integral from a to t, so where a is some constant, okay? of an integral of some function f of t prime. Okay, suppose you want to take this integral, the time dependence is here, and you want to take the derivative, what it will be. Okay, so this is just d over dt of um, integral, so let's, let's call the indefinite integral of ft prime as capital ft prime so let's define dt prime ft prime this is an indefinite integral to be f of t prime okay that's by definition so clearly f of t prime is the derivative of f okay if you integrate you get this if you differentiate you get this so capital f is the integral of small f so when you integrate this, you get capital F, okay? And you should put t prime equal to A and t prime equal to T, which is d over dt of f of t. So when I put t prime equal to T, this becomes f of T minus f of A, okay? And as I said, A is a constant. The only uh, place where you have T is here, so this derivative drops out and you get d f capital F over dt. But the derivative of capital F is 
what is small f. Okay, so this is f of t. So what you get here is that if you have the time dependence sitting here in the limit of the arg uh, in the argument in the limit of the integral, then after you differentiate, what you get is just the integrand, and the integrand is the f of t prime. So you replace t pri prime by t, and that's what you get. So f of t. Okay, let me write it as rough sheet. So that's what you are going to uh, use here. So d over dt or acting on this is g n r times derivative acting on the exponential. So derivative acting on the exponential is the derivative of the exponent times the exponential. So what's the derivative of the exponent? So right now you have integrand is minus n gamma tilde phi. Okay, and I should put instead of t prime t. That's what we have seen. So I get minus n gamma tilde phi lambda bar t lambda r. Okay, times this exponential again. Okay, which is um, which is minus n gamma tilde phi, I will suppress the arguments, times g tilde n, this times this, right, which is again the original thing, g tilde n e to the minus t k i lambda bar m bar mu. Okay, taking this to the other side and remembering that this is exactly this factor, you get d over dt plus n gamma tilde phi okay acting on g tilde n e to the minus t k i lambda bar t lambda r m bar t lambda r mu equal to 0 okay so we have checked that this is satisfied okay so you, you arrive at this equation so indeed what I have given you as a solution is correct. Okay, so that's the, that's the um, solution of our equation here. Okay, we will call it um, kellan zimanzik equation and that's the solution of kellan zimanzik equation. Okay, where is that? Here. So here is the solution. Now, okay, let's uh, discuss the solution. And um, I don't think I will finish the discussion today, but uh, in this video. But let's start it. So the solution to Okay, this is what I'm calling it's the same equation. This is what I'm calling Kalan Zimanzik equation. Okay. So the solution to Kalan Zimanzik equation is what we have found is G tilde Yeah. So let me do one more step. Here, this is a solution. Now what I'll do is, I will change the scale, or, or rather just, I will take this exponential and put it on the left side. Okay, so that I get a relation for gn as an, uh, gn with argument ki in terms of gn, in uh, terms of argument e to the minus t ki. Okay, so for t positive, this is a lower scale. Okay, so I will be then relating uh, uh, a Green's function at some scale to a Green's function, to the same Green's function at a lower scale. Okay, so let me take the exponential to the other side and write the solution here. Okay, so it's the same solution, but 
with the exponent uh, taken on the other side. So g tilde n r Okay. Remember, these are not bars. These are lambda r, m r, and mu. Okay, these are not running running couplings. Let me show you again. So here, what you have doesn't uh, involve running coupling or running mass. Okay, but the left hand side does. So I will take take this exponent on and on the left hand side, which will become the right hand side now. Everything will involve running coupling constant and running mass parameter. Okay, so this is. G tilde n e to the minus t k i lambda bar of t lambda r m bar of t lambda r mu times e to the This integral, k n is fixed, and is not function of these couplings. Okay. Um, I will do one more step, which is a minor step. So. Instead of ki, I will define pi. So instead of using momenta ki, I will just call pi, which are scaled like this. Okay, so that ki is e to the t pi. So using this, um, I get g tilde n renormalized. Now ki is e to the t pi. So when t is positive and large, I'm looking at a large momentum. All momenta are large now. Okay. None of these get affected. Okay. K, ki appears only here. There is no other place where ki appears. So it is going to change only here. Okay. No other place. So you get pi. lambda bar t lambda r or i will just suppress it i will just write t or maybe not okay so you see that the green's function at scaled up energy uh, scaled up momenta is related to unscaled momenta but the Green's function now here involves uh, running couplings and running masses. Okay, instead of lambda r and m r, this involves running coupling and running masses, and also you have this exponential factor. Okay, so this is our equation, which we, um, which satisfies the Kalanzi-Manzik equation. I'll give it a nice color. Okay, some color. I don't know whether it's nice. Yeah, looks nice. So. So that's the equation, uh, that's the solution. And let's um, analyze this, but before I analyze, I will write the same equation without all these details of the arguments. I'll keep the arguments uh, here, but also suppress um, these arguments in this expression so that it looks a little cleaner to see. So it's just e to the t, p, i, lambda r m r mu is equal to g tilde n r 
Okay, I wish I had suppressed these also. Anyway, so pi lambda bar of t, okay, which is really lambda bar of t lambda r, m bar of t, mu e to the integral 0 to t, dt prime n gamma tilde phi lambda bar of t prime. Okay, that's the same equation with some suppression. Okay. So, uh, so you see that now we have an expression of Green's function relating to different energy scales. Okay, and the the thing that we have gained here is that on the right hand side things are written in terms of not lambda r and m r which are fixed once you have chosen a mu. Okay, there is no nothing you can do to change them but in terms of lambda bar and m bar okay, which are a function of t now. Now depending on what the value of t is or how or equivalently how much you have scaled the external momenta okay, these lambda bars and m bars m bars will take some value okay. At, for different values of t these will have different values because these are functions of t okay. and this might be useful. Okay, it might be useful if the coupling constant or the running coupling constant were small for large t. Okay. So if, if lambda, see this is uh, this object, this is still the Green's function, right? It's the same object as on the left hand side. So when you calculate, it's the same Green's function, but only difference is that where you had lambda r and mr, you are putting lambda bar and m bar. Okay? So as far as the calculation is concerned, it's the same calculation that you still have to do. But here the advantage would come from the fact that if lambda were to be lambda bar were to be small or very small, if you go sufficiently high in, in energy, meaning a sufficiently high value of t, okay, so that all external moment are very large now. And if it were to happen that the coupling constant at the running coupling constant at those large values of t were to be small if that happened okay then you are calculating the green's function at very small values of coupling okay and let's say you are looking at four point green's function now four point green's function when you calculate you have seen that you have all terms of order uh, you have to sum up all terms of order lambda, lambda, lambda r, lambda r square, lambda r cube, lambda r4 and so forth, okay, all infinite terms. Now suppose at um, sufficiently high value of t, the coupling is very small, L uh, the running coupling is very small, okay, and because only the running coupling enters here, if you were to ignore terms of higher orders, okay, it will not be a bad thing to do because those uh, higher order terms are going to be very suppressed because of your choice of t. Okay, because the lambda bar is very small there. Okay, we are assuming that situation that lambda bar is very small at high, t, uh, high value of t. Okay, which could happen in some theories and could not ha happen in other theories. So that is the utility of it. Okay you can then just use a lower order result okay uh, sorry uh, a result without going at higher orders in perturbation theory and uh, still get a good prediction by using this equation okay because all the corrections are included in these gamma tildes and lambda bars okay. basically here okay so that's the that's the utility of this equation. But before we say more, let's um, look at how the running um, the running mass or the effective mass changes with t. Okay, so that's um, the next thing we will do. So 
So the question is, how does the effect, let's keep calling it running, running mass parameter run with t, okay? t is the scale. Just a second. Okay, so let's uh, find out how it runs with T. So the defining equation of M bar was the following. which is, remember gamma tilde is 1 plus gamma m. Okay, that's 1 plus gamma m. Okay, now suppose um, we didn't have to renormalize. Suppose there were no infi infinities. If there were no divergences due to the due to, due to the loop integrals okay then gamma m would be zero okay that is what we have seen earlier then uh, let's solve uh, this uh, differential equation for m bar in that case okay when there are no divergences in that case, del log m bar over del t will be minus 1. Okay, So here gamma m is 0. You have 1. So taking that minus sign to the other side gives you a minus 1. And 1 over m bar del m bar, that's del of log m bar. That's what I have done here. Okay. Now you can integrate this and you get m bar is equal to m r e to the minus t. Okay, where I have used the boundary condition m bar, m bar 0 or let me make it more clearer m bar at t equal to 0 is m bar. Okay. Remember that was the boundary condition we had supplied together with this defining differential equation for m bar. Okay. So when you use it you get this as the solution. Okay. So you see that the the, the effective mass goes down as you increase t okay, because this is e to the minus t. So if you take t to be, the lar to be large, meaning you are scaling up all the momenta, then the effective mass is going down. Okay? So, and it's going down very fast because you have e to the minus t. Okay? That's a very rapid uh, decay of this value. Now, um, in in general, gamma m would not be equal to zero, right? Because we will have to have it. <coughs> we will have <coughs> we will have uh, divergences in the loop integrals, ultraviolet divergences in the loop integrals in general. Okay, so in that case, the result m bar will be. Uh, MRE to, will not be a MRE to the minus T, but it will be the following. M bar T lambda R would be MR exponential minus T. This is still this result, but then a correction due to the effect of renormalization, which is this. So you can integrate the above equation and you'll get the following. Okay, this is lambda bar t prime lambda r.
Okay, so that's what you um, get in general. For, uh, so this is the behavior for mass. So this is something, you see, this is still something rapidly uh, decreasing, but then there are modifications. Okay, so that's good. Then So let's say, uh, let's again look at the case when there were no divergences. If there were no divergences, then I have already seen that um, m bar would be just m r e to the minus t. Okay. So in this case, we require, I'm just repeating whatever I said earlier. Just a second. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, what is that? Yeah. If there, if there were no divergences, and we required no renormalization, then beta tilde would be zero. Gamma m, as we have seen, would be 0. Gamma tilde m would be 1. Gamma phi would be 0. And gamma tilde phi, which is d phi tilde plus gamma phi, that would be just d phi tilde. Okay. Remember what d phi tilde is. d phi tilde is the mass dimension of phi tilde. Okay. That is coming purely from dimensional analysis. Okay, you just count what is the mass dimension of di uh, phi tilde, that is what d phi tilde is. Gamma phi is the anomalous dimension of phi, and that is what we had called gamma tilde phi. Okay, so even when you put gamma phi to be zero, because the z's are one, you still have gamma tilde phi equal to d phi tilde. Okay, now let's take this and put in the uh, definitions of m bar and lambda bar. So we have already seen that m bar as a function of t is just m r e to the minus t. Now let's look at the behavior of lambda bar in this, in this case, okay, when you don't need renormalization. So beta function, beta tilde is zero here, which means that lambda bar is a constant. Okay, that's the solution of this equation. And then lambda bar, even you put the boundary condition, lambda bar of zero, lambda r, that is lambda r, okay, that's the boundary condition, lambda bar at t equal to zero is lambda r, okay, so that counts constant is lambda r, so that's the solution. So you see that the effective coupling constant or the running coupling constant does not really run if you do not read, need renormalization, but still the masses, the running mass, it goes down. Okay, it, it decays rapidly with increase in t. Okay. Okay, so this will happen if you have a theory which is finite, where all the loops are giving you finite results. Okay, so let's put this in 
the Green's the solution for the Green's function that we obtained. Okay, and let's see what we get. So where is that? Here. Let me take this equation and put it on the next page. got a little bit of pink but it's not going to disturb us so if theory is finite okay no renormalization required Then what do we get? G tilde n renormalized at a large scale. I'm taking t to t to be large at these values of coupling constants and MR. Okay, that is what you want to calculate. Will be G tilde n R. Pi. What is lambda bar of t lambda r? So I have suppressed this lambda r here, but you know that that's there. So lambda bar t is lambda r. Okay. What is m bar of t? In this case, it is m r e to the minus t. Okay, t is large, so this is a very small number. Mu. Okay, let's keep t to be finite. But large, and then uh, this thing here will give us um, um, into. So, just a second again. Okay, so uh, what I was saying was that let's uh, look at the case where the theory is finite and doesn't require any ultraviolet renormalizations. Okay, in that case, um, g tilde n r of the scaled up momenta will be related to uh, the Green's functions, uh, Green's function without the scaled up momenta. And here, as you see, the mass is uh, suppressed because you have uh, e to the minus t factor, which is very small because t is large. Okay, so that's this. And then other factor is integral e to sorry exponential to um, so gamma tilde phi is what gamma tilde phi in this case is just d phi tilde okay just the canonical dimension of phi tilde so it is integral dt let me write this here integral 0 to t integral 0 to t dt prime of n d phi tilde d phi tilde is a constant it doesn't depend on t okay n is a constant doesn't depend on t and this integral gives you t so you get e to the t okay n d phi tilde okay that's the result you get okay so what it is saying is Think of e to the t as as um, as um, let's call it let's call it um, s. Okay, new s. Okay, don't con I mean you can call it s. So it is just s times pi. So all the moment I have scaled up by s times. Okay, then here you have in the argument this will become m r over s okay, because e to the minus t that's the inverse of e to the t so it will be 1 over s and this is s p i okay and here it is this factor is s power n d phi tilde 
okay now you see this result is what you would have gotten from purely uh, dimensional analysis right see green's function is what green's function is um this so there is time order product and right now this is the 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 tilde version meaning the fourier transform of it you are taking the fourier transform of <coughs> each of the each of these x's okay so you get five tildes for each of them okay so what's the dimension of this object it will be n d phi tilde right because each phi tilde will bring uh, d phi tilde and there are n of them so you have n d phi tilde sorry n d okay that is the mass dimension of this object okay and if you if you scale it up these momenta which you get here in the arguments uh, if if you scale it up then uh, based on the canonical canonical dimen canonical um, uh, dimension you see that the the object will scale up by a factor of s power the canonical dimension which is n d phi tilde right so that is what would have happened that that is uh, something you expected on the grounds of naive uh, mass dimension counting okay if only if if you uh, look at this green's function and say okay i just want to see how uh, things scale if i scale the the momenta okay in the case of a finite theory then you see that it is scaling just like um, uh, scaling according to the uh, canonical dimension of phi tilde right this object this object has mass dimension n d phi tilde and it is getting scaled as s times n d phi tilde okay that's the naive scaling that you expect that you get but this naive scaling based on these canonical dimensions is modified okay and uh, because of the fact that you have um this anomalous dimension and beta function and um uh, these objects non zero okay because you require renormalization and it is because of that effect that this naive scaling is is uh is modified to what you have here in the in the full expression okay so um let me just write it in words so prediction of the scaling based on naive power counting is modified due to the renormalization effects okay and as i have just told you if renormalization was absent then you do indeed get a uh, a knife um, a knife scaling based on power counting okay but this is the true result this is this is in a special case of a finite theory okay we'll um, discuss more about this solution that we have obtained um in in the next video